center. It is deep. It's gone! Randall Gretzik walks it off. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball Channel. And today, We've got to talk about the Toronto Blue Jays. They have been absolutely crazy in this offseason, getting ready to compete after making the playoffs last year. They're looking to do a lot more than that in 2021. So we got the Blue Jays expert, ball cap sports. Jim is here. Uh, how's it been going? Things are good. I'm I'm excited. Spring training is here. Uh, this series that you've been doing has been, has been great to watch. Uh, I'm just ready to talk some baseball, enjoying it. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I mean, you got to be excited about the Blue Jays and mm -hmm. uh, just going to take a look at some of their arrivals. I'll give my quick thoughts on it, but I'm going to let you do most of the talking on this because uh, obviously you know what's going on. But obviously Marcus Simeon, who was a, pretty much a big superstar very recently, I mean, mm -hmm. didn't have his best year. George Springer, an absolute definite superstar. Kirby Yates was one of the best closers in baseball a couple years ago, and it probably still is. Just had mm -hmm. a little bit of injury issues, but didn't really have, get a chance. Robbie Ray, strikeout machine is coming back. Um, so uh, Joe Panic, of course, I know from the Giants. Yes, and, uh, yes. But uh, he's back in spring training. So uh, what are your thoughts overall on the offseason for the Blue Jays? They did a great job, and I think everybody was – hoping that they would make a splash with either Taiwan Walker, James Paxton, or Jake Odorizzi. And it just didn't happen. They made the trade for Steven Matz, and that sort of has turned out to be the final piece that they were going to have for that rotation. Uh, I think the Malone thing is just a, a depth, an extra option, right? Ultimately, the lineup is a championship lineup. I think nobody's going to want to pitch against the Toronto Blue Jays this year. And the pitching is going to be the one area that they will get sort of the question marks and, and the side eye looks. But there's potential with everybody they have. They Every starter that they have in there outside of Ryu, uh, Ray and Roark and Matt have all had very good seasons. So you hope that they put it together because they really focused on the lineup, it seemed. And that bullpen, that Phelps signing, if you're not – really deep into like bullpens and relievers and, and the Blue Jays. The Phelps signing probably just was completely off the radar, but he was good for the Blue Jays. He's a nice reliever. The bullpen is a very strong element for the Jays. Bringing in Yates, having Phelps come in. Last year, Jordan Romano established himself. He's a name to remember. So everything they did, coupled with what they're bringing back from last year, puts himself in position to you know, compete with the Yankees to win the East. Yeah, no doubt about it. And um, you can take a look at the lineup, like you were saying. I mean, it looks like a legit freaking championship lineup. Now we got Springer and Simeon right there to go along mm -hmm. with the big. You no, know, last year was all about the young guys. You had Bichette and Guerrero Jr. Yep. And it was exciting and Biggio. But, you know, you kind of lacked some, you know, big name experienced superstars. And now you got two of them. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and look yeah. at that. One to eight, it's at least 20 home runs. And there's yeah. 30 homer potential. Simeon could get close to 30. Bichette, if he has a breakout, Teoscar's going to get there. Vladdy could push it. Cavan could push it. I mean, you've got just so much pop. One through eight, it's at least 20 home runs. Love it. Yeah, and you got a good catcher on the way in uh, Kirk. I'm, I'm you got, sure. yeah, Jansen and Kirk yeah. are probably going to split time unless Reese McGuire turns into Babe Ruth here in spring training. Yeah. It's going to be <laughs> Jansen and Kirk. And Kirk can hit. Jansen's in trouble because he has had trouble hitting. Kirk, his his scouting grade showed him as a hitter. His hit tool was the best tool. I think it was a 60 out of 80, which is nice. And he came up last year and, and hit almost immediately. So Jansen's going to get pushed for playing time by Alejandro Kirk. Yeah, and I just love the power. I mean, all the way through. I mean, yeah, who are you going to pitch around? You know, Springer, Simeon, Bichette, Hernan yep. uh, Hernandez. Hernandez was a monster last year. Yeah. Uh, you know, people don't don't realize how good he is. And uh, Guerrero, mm -hmm. yeah, it just doesn't stop. So I I'm in complete agreement with um, with the lineup. And, yeah, you were saying, let me jump out ahead. Let me grab the, the depth chart. Because there's a ton of pitchers that could possibly be. And I obviously think your main five are Ryu, Pearson, Ray, Mats, and Roark. But yep. Ross Stripling, uh, yes. Pat, uh, Thornton, Kay, who, who are these guys? I mean, what what do you think? 
Stripling is my choice to either steal a spot or be the first man up if there is an injury, which we already have an injury. Nate Pearson yeah. has an injured groin, right? So Ross Stripling, in my opinion, is the next man up because he has experience <laughs> starting and he's probably, with everybody that's that's going to be an option, has pitched the best in his career. Uh, only last year, and let's forget last year, right, and for a lot of these guys, but the other four seasons that Stripling has been a major league pitcher, he has never finished with an ERA in the fours. He's always been in the threes. Yeah. So if you can get that kind of quality from Ross Stripling, uh, I think he's the next man up. Again, either if there's an injury or if somebody is underperforming, Stripling is right there. And then and then after that, it's the youth. It's it, who's hot, who do they want to give a chance to. Hatch, Thornton, K, Zooch, they could also go a little bit deeper. They've got Merriweather uh, in the bullpen. There's there's a lot of options for that five spot. If you're not going to have like you know five amazing starters like the Dodgers or something, it's, it's best to have a whole bunch of depth because someone's going to step it up. Someone's yeah. going to you know the Giants kind of have the same situation. Um, not I mean we don't have a Ryu at the top, but you know mm -hmm. we got just a bunch of possibilities, and you just have to hope four or five of them you know step it up and do something. Yeah, I mean there's two ways to think about that. That's e that's either great that you have depth. Or it stinks because if you don't have five, if you have, uh, you know, eight starters, that means you don't have five starters, right? It's the old quarterback yeah. adage. If you have two quarterbacks, then you don't have one quarterback. Yeah. So you could look at it both ways. You just have to hope that. And I mean, you guys are pretty have uh, Matt's Ray, Robbie Ray. I, I was wondering what your thoughts are on Ray because he was pretty wild with the Diamondbacks. Seemed like he got a little better with Toronto. So 2020, it, there's so many guys that you just need to throw 2020 away. It, what whether they were distracted with the protocols or maybe family stuff or they only played for two months. Right, they yep. didn't get to play for a full season, so yep. they didn't and, get a chance to get hot for a month. And spring training got just cut. You know, cut. the whole routine got so jacked up. Everything was a mess. There were so many players that underperformed, and there were also players that overperformed. That we have to yeah. kind of have a realistic expectation because those guys didn't have a six-week stretch to go in the tank. So yeah. with a guy like Robbie Ray, I look at what he did in seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen, and I think that's what we're going to get. And if that's who he's going to be then that is a very fine three or four starter. Obviously, he has the potential to be top rotation, right? He's been an all-star. Yeah. He's, he's done amazing things. But I, when they signed him, he was one of the earliest free agent signings in all of baseball when the Blue Jays brought him back. And under the radar, I loved it. I thought that that was – I would have done a video on it, but I was I was in the, in the middle of a three-hour car ride, so I couldn't do it. And then when I got uh -huh. where I was going, there was no internet. So I didn't get to do a Robbie Ray video, but I love it. I think that he has the potential to be right up there with Ryu. And again, if he does what he did in that 17, 18, 19, I think he's a very fine three or four. It's just who's the two. And I worry Nate Pearson is going to overthrow. He's going to hurt himself. That is that is my only worry. And that's really the only reason I wanted Toronto to go and get Paxton or Oda Rizzi or somebody like that, you know, make a trade for Sonny Gray or Kyle Hendricks because I didn't want them to put too much stress on Pearson and have Pearson overthrowing and Pearson throwing something out, which I don't know if he's overthrowing and that's why he hurt his groin. But yeah. I just I wanted them to be able to take their time. I wanted Pearson to be the three at the very highest in that rotation. Plus, he's going to be on a pitch count. So many pitchers can be on a pitch yeah. count. Nate Pearson may not be available come October. He may have exhausted all of his innings. Yeah, that's possible. It's, it's crazy. It's every day, every every year, we're all excited. And like second day of spring training, people start getting hurt. Yeah, <laughs> start, I know. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? I think I can mm -hmm. play two days and not get hurt. But yeah, uh, yeah. But no doubt, yeah, the rotation, you know, Ryu Pearson, if he can uh, stay healthy, uh, Ray, Matts, Roar, mm -hmm. Stripling, and then you got your youngsters. And then uh, the bullpen, uh, you picked up Yates. Got to get your yeah. thoughts on, on Kirby Yates because, you know, he was uh, – didn't barely pitch last year. And before that, he was awesome. He was one of the best relievers in the game. And I think he's going to be awesome again. I really like what Kirby Yates brings. You know, it's only $5 million bucks, so they didn't have to spend a ton of money, right? The White Sox spent a ton of money on Liam Hendricks. And Liam Hendricks had visited with the Blue Jays right before that signing was announced. So that they went with the economical uh, Kirby Yates. And it's a great deal. One-year deal because I think the Blue Jays have plans and aspirations of Jordan Romano moving into that closer role. I really yeah. do. I think that he is who they view as the future closer. And if that's the case, you let him be the eighth inning guy in 2021. Maybe he gets some saves along the way. 
Uh, if Yates goes down, I think Romano is next up. So that's the plan. So, you know, Liam Hendricks wasn't going to sign a one-year deal. Uh, Kirby Yates was in that marketplace to get the one-year deal. And of, of the closers that signed one-year deals, I think the, the Jays got the best one. Uh, I love the bullpen with Yates. Romano yeah. Delise was great last year. Barucki. K is probably also going to be in the bullpen. He's listed as a starter right now, but they're probably going to have him uh, come out of the out, out of the pen. Chatwood could give them some innings. Merriweather. They've got a lot of pitchers that were starters that had, they've moved into the bullpen. So you've got on this list, Barucki was a starter. Chatwood has been a starter. Merriweather's a starter. Waggis Pack is a starter. So you've got guys that are going to have you know more than two or three pitches, which is what you tend to see with with bullpen guys, right? They have just yeah. you know, two or three pitches. They have a limited arsenal. With if you're coming out of the rotation, if you're a starter, you probably have four or five pitches. I think that makes it harder for hitters if you're coming out of the bullpen and you're throwing four different pitches, uh, just completely yeah. completely messing up the hitters because they can't focus in on. Just one thing, right? Just wait for the heater because exactly, they may not yeah. see the heater. They yeah. may see a whole bunch of other junk. Why not? One year deal for Yates because he had one year. We had some, mm-hmm. you know, bone chips or something, and he's fine now. Yeah, that's perfect. If Yates would have pitched in twenty twenty healthy and and had an amazing year, he'd be the one with a three or four year deal. It's a great deal, and and you know the Blue Jays have put themselves not to look too far ahead, but they signed Yates to a one year deal. They signed Marcus Simeon to a one year deal. So. They're going to be back in that free agent frenzy next year, too, because of, of some of these names, including Kirby Yates, that will be back on the market in um, 2020 well, for, for 2022. Yeah, so that's it. So that's the bullpen. And uh, overall, I mean, yeah, your team, it's going to be uh, – it definitely should be highly favored. And, you know, who, who are you more worried about, like the Yankees or the Rays? Or what do you think in that division? Well, it's interesting because the Rays just – always for years have been the thorn in the side of the Toronto Blue Jays. They always go down to Tropicana Field and they just can't win there. I'm yeah. hoping with this new young energy that sort of fades away. They certainly are going to have to go head to head with the Yankees. The Red Sox are going to be better. So it's going to be interesting to see. It's we, we, we hope that the Blue Jays are going to make a run for the American League East, but it's not Certainly not a shoe in. The Yankees are going to be tough. Right. I think the Rays, even though they lost Snell and even though they lost Morton, they're going to be competitive. They're going to be tough again. Jays are probably going to be fighting with the Rays in that 2-3 spot all year. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Though. It's a lot of, going to be a lot of yeah. close races this year. There's not a lot of teams that's just you know, a given. Not even the yeah. Dodgers because they got the Padres to deal they with. They got the Padres. Yeah, so yeah. – you got to yep. watch for a trade. The Blue Jays, you have to watch for a trade. They have the number three minor league system in the majors, according to Baseball America. Blue Jays are ranked third. And they've got the depth. We saw all that pitching that they have. They may want to take K and you know one of the other starters because they've got, what was it, eight starters listed. They may want to take some of that depth. There you see. Or a starter yep. or two and turn that into something later in the year if the cubs become sellers or the reds become sellers or the rockies step up their selling game you could see some moves but at the same time i have a feeling that shapiro wants to hold on to guys like woods richardson and manoa uh, just because he's you know he crushed alex anthopoulos for dealing all of those prospects to yeah. build that that Jays team with David Price and Troy Tulowitzki. Crushed him. And it's one of the reasons why Alex Anthopoulos less. Look look what Alex Anthopoulos has, has gotten the Braves to be. So yeah. good GM and Spiral ran him out. They could, uh, but I still think there's a trade out there with one or two of the major league pitchers that they've already got and one of the one or two of these prospects. And, and maybe they can get it done without even going into the top 10. Who knows? We'll see. But I do think that there will be a trade at some point during the season for the Jays. Which I expect you're going to be in a, in a, in a race here. Got to be. Year, so. they, they spent $18 million on Marcus Simeon yeah. and they spent the $5 million on Kirby Yates. If they didn't want to try to win the, the American League East this year, then they wouldn't have spent that money. Exactly. So if they just don't, if they don't add, if they, if they need the pitching, whether it's because of injuries or underperformance and they don't add, then they wasted that $23 bucks. 
Yeah, there's no way unless it's just some terrible happens and it's just a complete meltdown, you know, right. injuries. Unless that happens, yeah, they'll they'll be adding, no doubt about it, because yeah. um, the Blue Jays are clearly going for it, even if it's you know, wild, yeah. you know, wild card. Unfortunately, I think we're back to that one game, one playoff. and done. Yeah, yeah you don't want to be, don't want to be one and done. Yeah, I if yeah. they leave the team as they are, they're going to be fighting with the Rays, jockeying between two and three. But if they make that trade and get something like Hendricks or Gray or somebody else, if somebody else becomes available. Uh, top rotation guy, they'll be pushing to they'll be pushing to take the East. So yeah, I appreciate you coming on here talking Blue Jays, but uh, I don't know if you want to give any um, if you have any ideas on a, a total win you guys are looking for in our predictions for twenty one. I would put them. They they have to make the move. They have to make the pitching move. I'm going to yeah. say that if they go with what they've got, then I think they are right around eighty nine ninety. Yeah. Uh, if they can make some moves, which is not going to be enough to win the American League East, if they make some moves to improve the club, then I think they can get up to that ninety-five, yeah, and 95. be pushing, be pushing to win the American League East because it's going to be a tough American League East, right? I don't yeah, know if anyone's going to win a hundred games. Talk about the Yankees winning a hundred games. I don't know if that'll happen because four, four of the five teams are going to be very competitive this year. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited about the, the Blue Jays. I mean, what an off season! Definitely one of the best, if not the best, off seasons. Um, Padres, of course, might uh, might have had a slightly better. Yeah. I'm not really yeah. sure, but it's close. So you guys, you, Padres and the Blue Jays seem seem to won the off season uh, for the respective leagues. But all right, well, appreciate it coming on. And for everyone, yeah, make sure I'm gonna put the link in the description and I'll put a pinned comment. Pretty probably all of my subscribers are subscribed to you already. But if not, go over to Ball Cap Sports. And hit that subscribe button. Uh, and hit you. the subscribe button here as well. If you're not subscribed, hit the thumbs up button. You guys have a fantastic day. And we'll talk to you next time. See ya. When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are